This right here is what I would consider to be an absolute must have accessory for your Raspberry Pi. With this little hat, you can use a single cord for networking and power, as well as increase the read write speeds by around 10x. Basically, this little hat gives us access to a M.2 NVMe SSD, as well as enabling power over ethernet on the LAN port. Now there are a ton of different devices that have the same functionality. The one I happen to have bought on Amazon is from 52pi.com. And before I never really utilized the Pi because having both a ethernet and the uh, type C plugged in in that little rack didn't really fit very well. In addition to the read write speeds just were not there for the kind of uses that I wanted to do. Now with this, that has completely changed. So in this video, what I'm gonna do is talk about the device, go over the installation process and the setup process to actually boot an operating system off of the MVME on here. It does come with a really nice manual that goes over all the instruction steps, all the specs and even commands and configuration changes that you're going to need to run. And when you do unbox it, you do notice you actually get a uh, first party device. This is the Raspberry Pi Active Cooler. Uh, at a minimum, get one of these. I did a whole separate video on talking about why having at least heat sinks, preferably a cooler is nice. And when it comes to installing this little active cooler, it was very straightforward. All you do is peel off the bottom stickers for the heat sinks, and then you set it on with the fan part towards the uh, ports, the USB ports. You line it on there perfect, and it's pretty cool because it doesn't have any screws. It just has these little plastic things you push down and pop in, and that's how it holds itself onto the processor and some of the other little chips that it's trying to cool. Then there's a single plug-in with the little fan header here and that's about it. You now have a uh, actively cooled Raspberry Pi. Very nice. If you've ever accidentally like touched the CPU while it's running, which I have, you know it gets very hot. So now for this actual little hat, the installation process again is pretty straightforward. You have four standoffs that you go ahead and screw on down. It comes with these little black screws that you use, but I have a little riser on it uh, because I'm going to install it on this little thing right here, boop, because it's going to be sitting in my little kind of mini rack like this, probably get another one. And I will more than likely use these as like a DDNS server and maybe either a twin gate client or some other remote connection capability. So once you get the risers on, you pop on both the 40 pin and the uh, four pin GPIO headers. This makes it so you can still use these with the uh, actual hat on here. So you slide those on and probably the most delicate step of this is this little teeny tiny uh, PCIe kind of ribbon cable. Pretty delicate, be careful when you're screwing around with it. But first on the actual Raspberry Pi, you just kind of lift up the little connector here, slide it in, push it down, and it locks firmly in place. Now I will note here, I've had to uh, kind of take this off a couple times as I kind of learned it and played around with it. I'm using a slightly smaller hard drive than the pre-included kind of mounting point on the end. So if you are going to use something smaller, it's you should probably just install the hard drive now because you have to put a screw in the bottom to actually put this in here. So do note that, but if you have a normal size full length uh, SSD, you don't need to worry about that. Now, before you do put in an SSD, you're going to have to connect that little ribbon connector to the actual hat. So there's a little hole that you kind of slide it on through. And this one works a little bit differently. You kind of slide it out and lift it, slide the cable in there ever so gently, push it down, you're locked in, you're good to go. And then probably the most stressful part is this uh, for the um, kind of GPIO pins here. It is tight, it's a snug fit. So you're gonna have to apply some force, kind of line it up properly, apply some force, push it on through. <laughs> it was a little sketchy, but they did go through. And then you add the screws. And then just like that, you're good to go. Right here, ethernet cable is plugged into my PoE switch. Just a simple plug-in. And then you can see, there it is, the green light's on active. We have the red light on top. And the fan is definitely kicking up. That's one thing to note. The fan is kind of loud, uh, especially on boot and when it's under load, but it's pretty quiet when it's not having to work that hard. So now for the setup process of the MVME, this is also a pretty easy and straightforward task. 
Uh, first, I just put Raspberry Pi OS on the SD card here, booted into it. I ran a full system upgrade just to ensure that it had the latest kind of boot drivers. And then from there, since I already had the NVMe SSD plugged in, I went ahead and installed a Gparted, completely wiped it so there was nothing on it. And then I went ahead, consulted their little manual here, and then I modified the uh, file under boot firmware config txt. You add two different things there. One is a DT parm equal to PCIEX1, enabling it to actually use this SSD. And then after that, so we get more speeds, we do the exact same thing, but with the uh, suffix underscore gen equals three. So we get those gen three speeds. Now from there, since we did a full system update and updated the uh, actual uh, boot configuration, I restarted the system booting back into the uh, SD card here. And then from there, I did some configuration changes to the RIP EPROM config. So sudo run this command right here. And then at the very bottom, I added PCIe underscore probe equals one. And then under the bootloader or the boot order option, I switched the numbers from what it was to 416, six enabling boot from the NVMe SSD. And then from there, still in the system, didn't reboot or anything yet, I loaded up the Pi Imager, which comes pre-installed on the Raspberry Pi operating system. And I used that to throw Ubuntu server on this uh, NVMe SSD. You choose your device, you choose the operating system and you choose the storage. And at this point it should recognize and see that NVMe SSD there. Once it was completely done flashing, all I did was reboot the system and lo and behold, it booted me into Ubuntu, which is great. While in Ubuntu, I took the time to also do a full upgrade of that. So now this little thing with a single uh, PoE internet port, I now can use it as a little server in my home lab with some decent speeds. NVMEs are way more reliable than the SD cards. And if you've ever tried to use a operating system off of an SD card, you know it's not a good experience. Like I said in the beginning of this video, this is probably gonna be a little remote access device. So if any of my other machines go down, this is still acting as that, and hopefully it doesn't go down as well. I'm going to keep the little SD card in here with Raspberry Pi OS, just so I have the option to boot into a desktop if I would like to. And yeah, they, they didn't send this to me, no sponsor. There are other options, Raspberry Pi, the company has their own first party versions of these, but if you're interested in picking up the one that I went ahead and bought, I'll put an Amazon affiliate link down below. And that's about it. I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day and goodbye.